We all want the game we play to give us plenty of bang for our buck, and often that boils down to length and the amount of content they have on offer, which is why so often developers these days tend to favour live service models, or open worlds, and in many cases even both. But sometimes, these long games can feel like they're a bit too long, like they're stretching on for way longer than they needed to. Often, games that aren't even terribly long can feel this way because of uneven pacing. In this feature, we'll be talking about 15 such games, which started feeling, to us at least, like they were a bit too long. Before we get started, it bears mentioning that all 15 games that we talk about are games that we like, and in many cases absolutely love, and them being on this list isn't supposed to be a slight on their quality, as much as it is an observation about one very particular thing. With all that said, let's jump right in. Persona 5 Persona 5 was a game that we all waited for for a long time, which also included a couple of heartbreaking delays, but boy, was it worth the wait. Not only one of the best RPGs of this generation, but probably of all time, Persona still isn't a game without its flaws. For instance, its 90-hour runtime is perhaps a tad too much. One arc in particular, looking at you, Haru, feels like it's padding the game out more than anything else. The upcoming Persona 5 Royal is supposed to be even longer, but hopefully with all that extra content, it'll manage to accomplish better pacing than the base game did. Final Fantasy XV Running through Final Fantasy XV's main story actually doesn't take much longer than 30 hours or so, so the game feeling long doesn't have as much to do with its runtime as it does with its pacing. More specifically, those few chapters towards the end of the game that went completely linear, dropping the game's open world setting with a large chunk of this portion also seeing Noctis all alone and without the company of his friends, which frankly was the best part of the game to begin with. Thankfully, Final Fantasy XV ends on a very strong note, so at least this egregious section doesn't leave much of a bad taste in the player's mouth. Resident Evil 6 Taken together, Resident Evil 6's three campaigns can take anywhere between 25 to 30 hours to finish, and while that number might not seem like much, the game's quality makes the experience feel like it's a lot longer than it is. Let's be fair here. There are some moments in RE6 that are actually pretty cool, and Leon's campaign especially had some good stuff in it. But by and large, Resident Evil 6 failed as an action game and as a horror game, and sitting through to the credits three times often felt like a chore. L.A. Noir. L.A. Noir felt like one of those games that didn't really need to be open world. Its main draw was its story, and really the open world, more often than not, just got in the way of that what with not having much interesting stuff on offer anyway. Then there was the fact where it felt like the game would put its main story on hold as it took its sweet time to get to the point, while plenty of the main missions also had the tendency to become a bit too repetitive. All told, the game ended up feeling like it was twice as long as it should have been. The Witcher 3 The Witcher 3 doesn't really have pacing problems. It's not a start-stop story either. It doesn't feel like it's padded out with filler main quests, and its open world is absolutely not unneeded. Now, the only reason The Witcher 3 is a bit too long is because, well, because it literally is a bit too long. The main story can take roughly 60 to 70 hours to finish, and can go up to as many as 100 depending on how you play. Then you get the DLC into the picture. All in all, there's anywhere between 100 to 200 hours of content in the game, and for some, that's just daunting. Assassin's Creed Odyssey Sometimes, less is more, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey gives new meaning to that idiom. Don't get me wrong, Odyssey is a fantastic game, probably the best Assassin's Creed we've had in years, but it's also a bit too bloated, which is something it gets criticised for too often. It's got an absolutely massive world that's full of quests, side quests, and optional activities, and many of these optional quests end up feeling not too optional, given how much you need to grind later on in the game. Mass Effect Andromeda There was plenty that went wrong with Mass Effect Andromeda, and the game's open-world nature was definitely among the things that dragged it down. Open world and Mass Effect make a lot of sense together on paper, but Andromeda's open-world environments felt dull and lifeless, 
and they stretched out the game a bit too much. Add to the fact that the story itself really started to feel stagnant for a good dozen hours in the middle, and by the time the credits rolled, the game ended up feeling like it should have ended about 15 hours earlier. Middle-Earth Shadow of War 2017's Battlefront 2 was the catalyst of a major pushback from audiences against excessive microtransactions and loot boxes in games, which is just as well, because up until that point, the frequency with which we saw games making use of aggressive monetization was becoming alarming. Shadow of War was one of the most egregious examples, essentially forcing purchases on players to allow progress, and if you didn't cough up the cash, boy were you in for a grind. It was this model that stretched the game's length unnecessarily, and which also turned a potentially excellent game into one that could have been much better than it ultimately turned out to be. Red Dead Redemption 2 Red Dead Redemption 2 is a slow burn. It's breaking bad in video game form. It knows where it wants to go, but it wants to earn its ending and all its huge moments, and so it takes its sweet time to get to those moments, setting up everything bit by bit. It's masterful storytelling, though. But while there are many who enjoy that sort of thing, some just find it to be a bit too slow. It is that pacing that makes Red Dead Redemption 2's already hefty runtime of roughly 50 hours feel even longer. Add to that a section in the middle of the game that sort of kills the momentum, at least for a while, and the pacing begins to feel even more uneven. Skyrim just like The Witcher 3, Skyrim isn't too long because of uneven pacing or too much content. No, it's too long because it's literally too long. This here is a game that is full of interesting stuff to do, set in a world that begs to be explored thoroughly, with quests and side quests that you can't help but dive into. And when you're not doing all of that, simply messing about in the open world can bring you hours of enjoyment. But if you're looking for a game that isn't dozens, if not hundreds of hours long, and won't keep you from playing pretty much anything else, you might want to stay away from this one. Metal Gear Solid 5: The Phantom Pain Who would have thought that we'd ever get tired of too much Metal Gear Solid of all things? The Phantom Pain's first chapter is some of the best content this series has ever delivered, and it's that sort of stuff that makes us wonder just how much better this game could have been if Hideo Kojima and his team had been given more time to finish it. But then comes Chapter 2, which just feels like a retread of everything we already did in the first chapter. Because, well, that's exactly what it is. It's a chore to get through its repeated missions, and the fact that it doesn't even end with a satisfactory payoff makes it that much more disappointing. Okami Akami is one of the most criminally underrated games of all time. To call it an all-time great would not be an overestimation of its quality, too. But there are also many who feel that the game, in spite of its strengths, just stretches on far too long. At over 30 hours long, it's a game that can begin to feel like it's overstaying its welcome. There's a few times where it feels like the game's about to end, but then it just keeps on going for a little longer. It's a good thing that the game's mechanical core is so strong, and pretty much makes up for any shortcomings. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Xenoblade 2 doesn't suffer from the pacing issues that come from going on too long, like many games on this list do. Very little of its runtime feels unearned, in a sense. It's just that a lot of it feels boring, which makes the game feel like it's dragging and going on too long. There are a lot of subplots in the game's 60-hour runtime that are just a drag to follow, and they can make the whole game seem like it's stretching on and on and on. God of War To call God of War one of the best games of this generation and among the finest games to have come out of a Sony first-party studio wouldn't be an exaggeration in the slightest. But no game can be perfect. At roughly 25 hours long, God of War was more than twice as long as the longest God of War game before it, but at times, those 25 hours could suffer from somewhat uneven pacing. A couple of MacGuffins here, a few somewhat uneventful sections there, made for moments in the game where it felt like the pace was beginning to slack. Thankfully, the highs of that game were so high and the ending so spectacular that any pacing issues became very easy to ignore. Star Ocean 4 JRPGs have always had a tendency to be overly long, often suffering from poor pacing, 
and Star Ocean 4 is a textbook example of that. It's a game that certainly isn't one without its strengths, but a couple of arcs in the story take way too long to wrap up. Many dungeons feel like they're being dragged on needlessly, and some sections of the game just feel flat out unnecessary. It all comes together to make for the game feeling like it should have been much shorter than it was. And that wraps it up. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos daily, so make sure you don't miss them by subscribing. We appreciate your support, and we thank you for checking us out.